Trusty44, and welcome to this Let's Play of Tyranny. Last episode, we finally found Lexim and spoke with her, and she tried to kill us by sending us to, uh, Havoc. Fortunately, we did manage to survive the assault, and now we're here to speak with Reef Talon. Let's see what happens here. The beast woman waits by the dust-caked altar, head bent downward in contemplation. A deep, gravelly rumble emanates from her chest as you cross the chamber's threshold. With a loud chuff, she turns to face you. A fierce pair of ice-blue eyes watch you with murderous intensity. Stalkers and hunters, Bane and mystics, all come to spill Reef Talon's lifeblood. Beast woman must climb deep, deep, paw where lights do not follow. She watches you intently her ice-blue eyes piercing the chamber's shadow. She places her knuckles upon the cold stone floor, muscles coiled menacingly. Fatebinder creeps to Beast Woman's den, bathed in blood of wound warriors. Why should Reef Talon speak with human? Wagstaff sent me. There's still a way for you to help those in the wound. She snorts and raises a claw in warning. Fatebinder is fearless, like overconfident whelp before first hunt. Would human paw to Shadow Hunter Den and demand Prima's life? To Stone Docker Stalker Den? She watches you cautiously, silently awaiting your next words. Why flee the wound? You could have simply stopped using your magic. Too dangerous! What if Reef Talon's milk sickens cubs? What if blood corrodes tinker tools? No, no, too much to lose. Reef Talon will take no chances, will stay confined to depths. Can you be sure that your powers won't manifest in a new way that harms the settlers even from here? Beast Woman did not envision this. Reef Talon's hackle is raised in alarm. Fatebinder speaks of possible truth. Sleepless poison is created by mending touch. What if same corruption grows stronger and spreads from afar? She glances down at the leathery pads of her palm. Perhaps Reef Talon has been cursed for trespassing where human prima called Kairos forbids. What do you hope to gain from hiding here? Not hiding! I'm saving others! Her breath clouds the cool air, her words sharp and prideful. Reef Talon could not let corrupting power harm kin and kith. Left home den, but did not abandon tribe. Did not run and hide, but does not know what will solve problem. So you are content to let Jaspers and Wagstaff lead your tribe. Would hope Ocean Mystic and Stonecutter choke on own hatreds. Reef Talon is no longer prima, so must not, cannot be concerned by such matters. How did you come to find the wound? For a moment her eyes grow distant and shed their intensity. Reef Talon has lived four lives. First life was free Mantaborn in islands near human lands called Stalwart. Second life was as slave. She chuffs and banishes the thought with a shake of her head. Third life was Prima to wound tribe. And now Reef Talon lives fourth life as wretched outcast, skulking in deep pits of old walls. What was your life as a Mantaborn like? Mantaborn are warriors of land and ocean, more free than land-trapped beastmen. Island kith are not quarrelsome like Tyr's tribes, not always leading packs to rendrake kill rivals over parched land. Island warriors respect tribe boundaries where sand meets water. Beast woman has no need to fight other tribes. Mother Ocean provides great maws and deep larkers to test warriors and mystics, to keep Mantaborn strong. Reef Talon's mouth stretches into a knowing smile. Has Fatebinder wrestled with black-eyed Great Maw with head and tail of spears? Or killed clear-skinned Lurker with growing fangs and snakes for limbs? Has human ever heard deadly song of stinging cloud and stayed awake? Mantaborn does not need tribal war to stay fierce. Hunt, bleed, feed packmates. She bobs her head at the fond memory. What's good life? Tell me about your time in slavery. Was less than seven years ago. Reef Talon awoke to nest beset with humans. Human tried ans tribe answering to Prima straight us overwhelmed Reef Talon and Kin. Likely survived only because humans desired captive muscle, not roasted beast. She narrows her eyes, ruminating over some remembered detail. Long did Reef Talon toil in confinement, until mystics from Chorus tribe came one morning to human den. As humans drank rutted feasted over moonless night, blood rage filled Reef Talon and the other captive kin. The hair on the beast woman's back stands erect as she speaks. Saw only red, red, red. Awoke to butchered captors and freedom. Reef Talon does not know what fever possessed other beastmen. Did not think to ask, only of escape. 
I know of this. The chorus used magic to enrage Beastman's slaves. I put an end to that, pad to that pra uh, practice. She bobs her head in approval, her chest purring with satisfaction. Good. Fatebinder shows respect for Mantaborn tribe. Perhaps Fatebinder is also worthy of respect in return. So you learned your magic from Mantaborn mystics? No. Mantaborn groomed Roof Talon for such a role. Reef Talon for such a role. But only for a season. Outsiders came. Mystic paint came off. War paint came on. And tribe was, sat was shattered. Reef Talon never gave rites of initiation. Is not deserving of ancient title. How did you come to lead the wound, even if briefly? Did not come to wound to be prima. But once arrived, Reef Talon was only proper answer. Was best at hunting new prey. Showed kin and kith how to slink through deep dark. How to hold ground against scourge beasts. All beasts bowed to Reef Talon. Once, Wound Clan gathered to discuss scourge hunt in Old Walls. Stonecutter and Ocean Mystic could not agree on plan, only wished to bicker and yell until Reef Talon roared and the whelps cowered. Tribe knew only Prima Reef Talon could maintain order, until Tribe became fearsome of, fearful of Prima's magic touch. Then Beast Woman could no longer inspire order, only fear. I want to know more about your healing abilities. Does Fate Binder remember time before knowing to crawl? Beast Woman did not know such power existed until Packmates already mended. Have no answers for Fate Binder or Beast Woman. How did these powers awaken in you? Beast Woman cannot say for sure. Her hands gesticulate wildly, but for a time no words come out. Ever since coming to this place, Reef Talon feels hum of magic, but did not feel it until it already happened. Packmate was injured on patrol, and Reef Talon ran to clutch injured whelp. Beast Woman remembers hearing lifeblood from inside dying body, and roared it to obey. That's when Mending Right began to knit flesh. That's when Reef Talon's shame began. Why do you think the healed become sleepless? Can describe sensation of healing power, but not meaning. She pauses to think, listlessly tracing a painted symbol on her chest with a claw. When human lies on ground with lifeblood pouring from wounds, Reef Talon can sense blood rage inside dying creature. And when Beast Woman touches paw to human, Reef Talon can stoke blood rage to live longer? To demand blood keep pumping? I'm not explaining right. No, no. Can't. But mystic gift always goes too far. Always! Mending Right's grab of life sparks stretches far and fast until extinguished, snuffed, drowned. After right, human's wounds close and life blood dries, but life spark is gone. Healed human is hollow, does not remember pain or pleasure, does not dream, is sleepless. Do you think being in the old walls gave you these powers? She shrugged, scratching her head with a gruff sigh. Maybe. Reef Talon never finished proper teaching to be mystic. Power always feels like it's coming from within, Reef Talon. But maybe Old Wall is awoken mending right? Tell me of the sleepless. The Beast Woman bristles at the mention. Greatest of shames. Reef Talon has sickened own tribe with dreamlessness. Do you know how they were created? Beast Woman only knows that sleepless were birthed from mystic strength. From Reef Talon's corrupting touch, dark powers extinguish life spark of dying human. After mending right, human looks like living warm blood, but carries hollow death on inside. Reef Talon looks away, ashamed. Why are they down here? After mending rites, dreamless kiffs smell like spent flame. Hearts do not beat with purpose or desire to live. Dreamless always call out to Reef Talon, beg mewling for answers. Reef Talon has none. The Beast Woman covers her ears with her hands. Sleepless brood will not leave Beast Woman. Always remind her of failure. Any idea why the Bane ignore the Sleepless? Same question ponders Reef Talon. Scourge beasts seek blood of Beast Woman, but never of Sleepless Kith, even noisy Sleepless. Reef Talon thinks Sleepless cast no scent for Scourge beasts to smell, no dreams to tempt ancient hungers. Yeah, I had kind of the same kind of thing. I've seen only human sleepless. Are there no sleepless beasts? No, not yet. Used mending rites on beasts in pack, but saw no dreamless star. Do you know of any way to cure them? If Beast Woman knew, would have already tried. Human sage called Lexeem insists Reef Talon has gift, can mend better, but is wrong. Is folly to try. Must never use wretched gift again. It's time for you to return to the wound in one form or another. Human will leave this place. Nothing to discuss. Leave Reef Talon to suffer with withered kin. 
Let finding Reef Talon fade from memory. Your blood is special. Wagstaff can use it to cleanse the water for years to come. Will you submit and help the wound? No! The word is spoken menacingly, in a low tone that transforms into a deep rumbling within her chest. Reef Talon has seen cages of torture and blood-taking. Will not be skinned and flayed as common elk. Return to the wound. You can be of help there. Perhaps even lead the settlers. She rests back on her haunches and chuffs dismissively. Reef Talon has already fouled packmates. Mending rites closed rips and tears, but left empty husk in place of human kith. Wound tribe no longer accepts Reef Talon as alpha, or even lowly pack whelp. Faintbinder speaks of empty words that cannot be fulfilled. Hmm. You're only running because the sleepless remind you of your guilt. If I could help them find peace, would you return? A thoughtful rumble vibrates along the back of her throat. Mystic strength is source of dreamless corruption. Reef Talon could keep power buried inside and focus on leading hunt for scourge beasts. Could still serve tribe. But dreamless brood clings to life. Hollow husks always follow Reef Talon. Steps stumble through dark halls and hunger for pack leaders' call. No ways to ease suffering of sleepless except by death. But Reef Talon will not kill feeble kith. Her bright eyes narrow in suspicion, finding yours in the darkness. Is Fatebinder suggesting... If that's the only way, then that's not an option. Human is foolish and cruel, should not bray and give voice to futile hope. Hmm. You should lead. Neither Wagstaff nor Jasper can truly unite the people of the wound. They're at each other's throats. Ocean Mystic Wagstaff and Stonecutter Jasper roared loudly. Wound leaders imitate Alpha, but must slink smile boast in to scrounge respect of tribe. True Prima does not scrounge. True Prima already has respect. Was like this when Reef Talon claimed Wound Tribe, but now packmates are of men fear mending rights. Reef Talon does not have respect needed to tame Wagstaff and Jaspos. The beastmen still need you, regardless of what the humans think. She grunts, waving her claws in disagreement. Cannot return to Wound. Shame has not faded into distant memory. Dreamless husks would follow Reef Talon back to tribe. Will invite only sorrow back to, into the nest. The one on the piece. <sighs> of course not. Uh, uh. <sighs> so. We can either lie and say there's another way. We can say we're going to kill the, kill the sleepless, which may cause anger, or we can tell her to leave, which will lead to this place falling. Uh, go further into the old walls, I mean. Oh boy, this is actually a tough choice. Seems harsh to say that we need to kill them. <sighs> yes, what other choice do we have? No! Reef Talon roars her protest with fury, momentarily rousing the nearby Sleepless from their collective haze, if only to cower. Fatebinder will not kill Sleepless. Endless spraying of dreamless brood is punishment for Reef Talon's mistake. So then what if we lo- Oh, wait. You need to take responsibility and end their suffering. Only you can do that. But Reef Talon has accepted responsibility for bringing pain to Sleepless Brood has come to endless deaths to slink in darkness with added, addled whelps, has done everything! Hmm. If someone seriously hurt your cub but did so by accident, would you rather... Uh, 
Remember being a prisoner of the Chorus Mystics? The agony you felt must be what they feel now. A pensive hum p plays along the back of her throat. Perhaps Fatebinder is correct. Dreamless must die eventually, same as dreamers. Reef Talon must not let Sleepless suffer an imitation of life. Must find courage to cull weak herd, no different than harsh winter. She leaps toward the chamber's entrance in a burst of vigor. Wait here. Sleepless have long been dead, only pretending at life. Reef Talon will now fix her mistakes. Will not take long. After a few hours, Reef Talon paws back into the chamber, fur matted and damp with blood. Her eyes have a distant, haunted look to them, as she, and she pants as if tired from an explosive sprint. Beast Woman has killed own brood. Blood leaves bitter taste, but it is done. She grasps a broken fragment of the stone floor and leaves her and leaves her tongue over it, scraping it over and over to remove the taste. Sleepless whelps return now to Ocean Mother. No longer suffer in endless depths of old walls. For first time in months, Reef Talon no longer hears mewling call. Fatebinder has kept promise and helped end suffering of dying brood. Beast Woman will also keep promise. She chuffs and stamps the ground several times, seemingly working up the courage to continue. Reef Talon will return to wound now and help tribe. Have dwelled in pit for too long. Now is time to return. Fatebinder should have Reef Talon's knife. She draws what must be a small blade to her, but is a proper sword to your hand to you bleh, to your hand from her bandolier. With head bowed, she hands you the weapon. Brought good luck to Reef Talon in deep dark. Will bring good luck to Fatebinder. Also has too much stink of blood from humans Reef Talon trained to hunt. Much, much better Fatebinder has. Very harsh. So what do we have here? Penumbra. Plus ten parry for each engaging enemy, and arcane burst on weapon crit damage and range. Shatter's treachery. The primordial blade Penumbra turns its victim's shadows against them, wrapping them in its own darkness and weakening them to the sword's ephemeral edge. The time that the time the targets remain afflicted by the by this power scales of Penumbra's unknown renown. Your shadows flicker erratically in the wan violet light emitted by this viciously sharp bronze blade, fluctuating between converging about the weapon's length and stretching as if trying to escape its presence. No legend sings of this weapon, yet it bristles with sorcerous energy the sharpened alloy's edge seems insufficient to contain. Perhaps the craftsperson responsible for the sword used techniques long lost to modern smiths, infusing it with a power that may be older than the Archons, the Overlord, or even the old walls you discovered it in. It has lower DPS and accuracy than Dauntless. So I guess we're not going to be using it. Well, maybe if I upgraded it, but I'm not right now. Jeez. Oh, What's that one? Star Smite Staff. Launches three projectiles with increased range that cannot crit. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, I'll keep it because it's named, but still. Right. And now we deal with these... Loot what we can. Lexeem is still here. Lexeem's I uh, uh, I should be on my way. That said, I do think I have an idea how we get into uh, there. So I remember, I think this one could open at yellow. There must be something in there that we need. Yeah, that probably makes this one able to be opened. Because there was nothing nearby. It's the only thing that makes sense. No. So then how the hell did we get in there? Hold on a second. There needs to be... Thank you. 
So then how the hell do we open this? There's got to be some way to open this, but I don't know how. And why does activating this do something? Because that didn't open that before. And we still haven't found... We haven't found the Chronicle hidden in this level. Seriously, I don't understand how you get in here. Will do. So where's the Chronicle in here? It has to be in here somehow. opened up all these other things. Do these do anything? That does something. That opens up down here. I didn't realize we hadn't gone in. Ah, I see. Okay, first off, loot that, kill those. There it is. I can see the uh, the sparkling. That's the last one. How am I not dead? Okay. Nope. And Interesting. A hidden thing here. All right. Let's use this chronicle. Another find. No matter how old I get, the smell of found parchment never ceases to get me going. Almanac of Azure, 420 through 422. If grain yields turn you on, I have some steamy reading for you. Minutes of the ardent peace accords of 419. A snore even by my standards. Uh, what else? And then there's. Oh, back to Azure, years 423 through 426, and... Well, that's odd. Lantry falls silent, absorbed in reading. Considering the unusual details in the other chronicles, let's give this a close read. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Mm, this seems wrong. Read here. Lantry tilts the tome toward you, pointing to a passage of text that has his attention. See this page? Well, maybe don't bother with the whole thing. It's rather dense, but here's something fascinating. It's about House Varia and House Pelox having a two-span war over who owns some portion of what's now the southwestern Stone Sea. Notice something unusual? Hmm. So two tribes of Tearsmen have a fight, and they... invoke Graven Ash's name before the fight. That seems an error. Exactly! That feud happened by many accounts, but the way it's described here? Nonsense! Tearsmen calling on Graven Ash for favor before a battle? Come on now, that never would have happened. Some fools around here didn't even bother to learn the name of the fearsome general waiting across the isthmus to invade. Can you tell when this was written? Was it penned back then, or is it more recent? Oh, good question to ask. 
With a twirl of the hand, he produces a dry quill and scrapes at the ink written along the chronicle margins. Minimal flaking for a dark umber ink. Probably not more than a few years old. Not encouraging. It's... Uh... You could correct the record. You keep suggesting that, and given my duty to the true accounting of all things, it seems the right move. When we're back at the spire, the record will be corrected. With the various scrolls tucked about his bandolier, Lantry feigns collapse under the burden, then steadies its balance with a smile. We could continue scrounging the area, but considering the small mountain of parchment I'm carrying, I think we've found all we're going to find. Lantry runs his hand across one of the numerous chronicle volumes found in your search. I think I'd like to hear what Lexeem has to say about all of this. I was slow to accept it, but these changes are her doing. She owes me her reasoning. And what are you hoping to hear from her? An explanation, an apology, maybe. I never expected a chronicler to behave like this. I think I can tell you what she'll say. Let's see. Uh... Her missive asked for a fate binder to find these texts. She didn't intend to involve you, nor the whole Chronicle. The moment she violated a Chronicle passage, she involved me. Though, you are right. It's not as if she systematically altered every Chronicle ever written. You are right. This was a ploy to fool the court, not me. I don't have to approve of it, but I can almost appreciate her thinking. Whatever her reasons, I disagree with how she is tampered with history. Though, I doubt my descent matters to her at this point. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Ever onward. Indeed. We have Lexeem nearby, so let's go speak with her. Episode may go a little bit longer, but that's fine. Ooh, we leveled up. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that after we speak with Lexeem. Just gonna charge up to her. All right. I have the texts you wanted me to gather. Thank you, Fatebinder. She bows deeply, her face turning red as she looks toward Lantry. Lies! And the worst kind, too. Falsity strewn about a bed of facts. Grains of poison in the rice. You aren't wrong, like dear Lantry, but certainly you must understand my endgame. What purpose does the Chronicle serve now? Is it reference? Joyous reading? I may have made a few edits, but I've created something that might save lives. Lantry, she wanted me, a fate binder, to find these texts. Don't you understand? So... so you're justifying your lies now. This is not how proper sages behave. Tell the whole story, the good parts and the bad. Is that not our way? Our way ended with Kairos. Our school is gone, but I'm a pale shade of what I used to be. All that we can do with our record is maybe, just maybe, save some lives. If just one person was saved because Kunan's court had some record of tearsmen showing fealty to Kairos before this war came to pass, what if we saved lives? You would squander every prior act of academic discipline that came before you on the chance of exonerating someone. I, I'm sad I live to see this day. Remain silent. But... But why cling to truths that will bury us? If we are perceived as laughable but honest, let us use our reputation for honesty to save whomever we can. Hmm. I know you haven't slept in ages, but have you forgotten how much the truth means to Lantry? No, I have not. If I knew he'd be here to lecture me for what I'm doing, I might never have tried this stunt. I'm as self-serving as it gets, and even I feel like this principle matters more than a few lives. Generations of sages toiled to make this record right and true. Would you truly squander their life efforts? You speak true, and I cannot say the same. Lexeem cups her face in her hands, wiping away errant tears. If the others knew what I've been doing, what have I done? Thank you, Jace Pe Jason Pendragon. I apologize for the deceit and half-truths, but by now you must understand that my intentions are kind. Since you held your end of the bargain to preserve my texts, I submit now to your justice. She drops to one knee. My magic has left me. 
I have forgotten what it feels like to dream. Please, I think I wish to be free of my regrets. Your current condition is suffering enough. I am sword to the Fatebinder's side, but I will endeavor to return to you if and when I can. Forgive me, I had been readying myself for the end, but if my punishment is to live to help the others sleepless, well, I shall not deny such a merciful ruling. Thank you, Jason Pendragon, for everything. One last thing. Lexime draws her dagger, gripping it by the blade, and presents it handle forward. I lack the magic to make this sing like I once did, and the bane don't seem to attack me. Better you have this. You say this with such finality. Lantry blinks rapidly before shaking off the sorrow with a pained smile. Such a treasured blade will be used in great deeds. Thank you, Lexi. Okay. We're going to need to talk with him. Circular reason. One-handed and thrown weapons. Three points stolen from a random attribute for a short duration. Rebounding blade. Drawing on the ancient magic, suffusing this dagger. Circular reason passes effortless through the wielder's enemies, only to return to the user by the same path, and potentially through the same enemies. The damage inflicted by this power scales with Circular Reason's renown. This well-balanced throwing knife has the remarkable property of returning to its thrower, an enchantment that could lead to fatal accidents if one is expecting the usual behavior for hurled objects. The blade has passed through 200 years of sages, yet no definite story of its origin exists. Many of the stories tell of long-lost lovers, tragic vengeance, and most suggest this blade came from the old walls and lands afar. Lantry finds most of these tales ludicrous, and insists the blade was someone's ill-conceived attempts at suicide or a gag gift to a beloved rival. After all, the blade is perfectly accurate in its ability to reach the person who threw it, and not perfectly accurate in its ability to hit other people. I think it's good to have this. For you to have it, anyway. It's lower, but I think it's fine. Oops, I broke it! <laughs> oh, just kidding. I'm glad you're just kidding. I would have said something. Uh, oh yes, and level up. For you. One more point in there, make it even. And on this end... Uh... Killing Rush? Resurgence? Killing Rush. No, Resurgence. The healing is needed. And we'll get Killing Rush after. Alright, and yeah, I know, we have Circular Reason. Another powerful artifact. Our power is very high. Anyway, I am going to end this episode here. Next episode, I think we're going to run through this place, check the previous floors, because I think there's a few more things we need to investigate, and then move on to, uh turn in the quest and report in. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44, that is Jason Pendragon, Barrack, Lantry, and Ebb. This has been a Let's Play of Tyranny. And I shall see you all next time.